Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yes, and I know this review is kind of random, but since Ferris Bueller came back in theaters the other Sunday and yesterday, I decided to go see Ferris Bueller at two at my 2 p.m. Regal Cinema showing of Ferris Bueller. And since Ferris Bueller, if you if you guys don't know, this is one of my favorite comedies of all time. I see this movie on the big screen was just one of the best things I've ever done in my entire life. I am not going to go in too deep with the plot of this film since the film is literally 30 years old. The story revolves around Ferris, a teenager in high school. He plays hooky. His parents believe him, but his sister does it. So he goes around town with his girlfriend and his best friend, but his sister is trying to bust him. Just like Candace in Phoenix and Ferb, she's trying to get him in trouble, but she's not the only one. Principal Rooney, played by the great Jeffrey Jones, also knows something's up with Ferris, and he thinks that Ferris is also playing hooky. And this film is freaking hilarious. This movie is timeless. This is one of those movies that, if you like, 5, 10, 85 years old, you will still have a great time with this film. This is actually not only one of my favorite comedies, this is actually one of my favorite movies of all time. This movie has so many memorable quotes like, Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. A, I'm not going too far. B, if I'm ever going to get busted, it's not going to be a guy like that. Breaking the fourth wall in this film is one of the best things you can ever do in a comedy like Ferris Bueller and like in a film like Deadpool, which Deadpool does break the fourth wall a lot in this film, which he kind of did in the end credits of this film. Spoiler, by the way, he imitated us in the end credits scene of Ferris Bueller and put it onto this film, which was kind of awesome. It's very appropriate, but for Ferris Bueller, Honestly, he is the king, as much as I love Deadpool to death. Ferris Bueller is the king of breaking the fourth wall. Now, John Hughes is one of my favorite all-time directors. God made rest his soul. The guy knows how to portray teenagers in his film. He also directed some other great films like The Breakfast Club and Sixteen Candles and Weird Science. The guys know how to portray teenagers in this film. They're very fun, they take risks, they're rebellious, they don't care about the rules, and teenagers, that's how they are. Now this movie is not all laughs and giggles. Ferris' best friend Cameron, who unlike Ferris, Cameron is actually sick, but Ferris has to force him out of bed to go hang out around town. So Cameron lets Ferris borrow his dad's red Ferrari, which Cameron at first was against that since those joyriders who let him borrow his car kind of messed it up a little bit. Which Cameron kind of freaked out about. Because if he found out his foot car was used, his father would kill him. And really, towards the end of the movie, you can kind of see more, learn more about Cameron's backstory at home. Tyler Ruck gives us a great performance towards the end of the movie as Cameron. And the character actually kind of find it more likable than Ferris. Because even though Ferris... Is a cool character. Ferris is kind of a douche in a way. <laughs> he is kind of. Because he forced his friend. His sick friend out of bed. Which if he takes his dad for Robert. He will kill him. Which in a way Ferris is kind of a douche. <laughs> I am so fascinated by a young Charlie Sheen. If that even sounds right. And seeing this movie in the theater. Felt like a new film. And really every time I watch this movie. I never get tired of it. This movie, it just is the definition of just, it's just fun, feel good, you'll watch it, you'll have fun with it, watch it with your friends. This is one of those late, well not late night comedies, Friday night, Saturday night, popcorn, candy, soda, popcorn fun film that you'll watch with your friends on Saturday, Saturday or Friday night. I mean, Ferris Bueller is one of those, even though it came out in the 80s, this movie really holds up very, very well. Because if I was Ferris, I would do the same stupid stuff that he did in this film. I would hang out with my girlfriend and my best friend. We'd go around town. We'd have to do all this crazy, stupid stuff, fun stuff, and have a good time. And that's what I really have with this movie. It's a good time. I'm not saying this because this is one of my favorite movies ever. This the movie, and what's kind of interesting about this movie, since Phantom Events did like a special screen of this in my local Regal Theater, John Hughes wrote the script of this movie under six days. I'm like, 
Wow, really six days. And that's pretty much all I have to say about Ferris Bueller's Day Off, honestly. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. One of my favorite movies of the 1980s. And one of my favorite comedies in general. This is a fun movie. This is one of those movies you have to watch before you die because you have never seen Ferris Bueller. Just go watch it. Buy the DVD or buy the Blu-ray. Watch it on iTunes. If it's on Netflix, we'll go watch it on there. If it's on Voodoo, go. If it is on Voodoo, so go watch it. Ferris Bueller is a film that should not be missed by anyone on this earth. If if you have not seen it, I guarantee you to watch it, please. This film would definitely worth your time. I'm gonna get Ferris Bueller's day off. An A plus. Thank you so much for watching, guys. What do you think of Ferris Bueller in the comment section down below? If you hate this film, why are we living on this earth and why do you watch movies? But anyways, I will be back with my review of X-Men Days of Future Past. Can't wait for this review. And if you're new to my channel and if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.